For most of his life, or at least since he was old enough to comprehend it, the Prince of Wales has been thoroughly aware of, and preparing for, the unique role written into his future. Yet little could have adequately prepared him for the position he now finds himself in, as a husband and father desperately trying to hold his family together while his wife undergoes treatment for cancer. It is a summons nobody ever hopes to face in life, but all too many do. Some people liken a cancer diagnosis in a family to a trauma, because after that one conversation it feels as if nothing will be the way it used to be, says Karen Seeger, a psychotherapist who specializes in supporting people affected by cancer, as well as their families and children. The particular challenges of being in Prince William's position at the moment are vast and far-ranging. In the first instance, he is on hand to offer immediate emotional and physical support to his wife, the Princess of Wales, he also will have helped her delicately explain the situation to their children, George, Charlotte and Louis, as well as field their questions in return, and he will also need to take on more domestic responsibilities at Adelaide Cottage, the family's home in Windsor, where the Waleses have no live-in staff. Outside the home, he'll be the point of contact for friends and relatives seeking updates and trying not to disturb the princess with a bombardment of well-wishes, a task far greater than it first seems. All of this in addition to his day-to-day -day responsibilities as a working member of the royal family, Seeger, who has personal experience with cancer, including twice being diagnosed herself, points out the loneliness of that multifaceted pressure. What often happens is that you don't feel entitled to say you're struggling with it all, because the focus is so much on your partner, the patient. A diagnosis in the family can make people feel as if they've lost control of their life, because it's now all up to a medical team who are likely strangers. The patient starts to feel like a bystander in their own fate, but so does the spouse. One of the challenges is that treatment leaves the patient and their loved ones suspended in a state of uncertainty. So people could say, for example, oh, she's not lost her hair in chemotherapy, it must be okay, but nobody knows that for certain and, for a partner, that constant uncertainty is what is so destabilizing. One husband and father who cared for his wife during her leukemia treatment still remembers that most, you wake up and you don't know what that day holds, he admits. Accept the limits of your power The charity Macmillan Cancer Support underlines the importance of not ignoring your own feelings at a time when the natural instinct is to focus everything on your partner. It is not good for you to ignore your feelings for a long time. You should try to take care of yourself during this stressful time. Paying attention to your feelings is an important part of this. It can help you support the person with cancer, the charity advises. An added challenge is that some men, and women, see themselves as fixers, or think they are experts at applying logic and process to problems in life, but an illness such as cancer throws a spanner into that. Prince William is both personally resourceful and has bountiful resources, but he cannot influence everything. Those sorts of people struggle most as they find themselves in a situation they cannot fix, which causes anxiety, Seeger says. The advice is to instead, fix the way you look at it, and try to accept the limits of your power. One woman who recovered from cancer said her husband felt, almost jealous sometimes because the patient gets all this attention and sympathy and can just scream or cry or collapse or whatever but the partner has to just keep everything together and not be grumpy. Men have traditionally been worse at discussing their mental health than women, but when stoicism is gilded by an extra sense of necessary selflessness, it's easy to feel as if you must simply shut up and put up. Keep daily chores running the 11 feelings that people commonly feel when a loved one is diagnosed with cancer, according to Macmillan Cancer Support, include the following, shock, fear, anxiety and uncertainty, denial, grief and loss, sadness, anger, resentment, guilt, loneliness, and tiredness and exhaustion. People can get frightened and frustrated when their partner is going through this, Seeger says. In Prince William's case, he might have a sense of, why me, given he also lost his mother at a young age, so he may fear loss and abandonment, and on top of that his father is also ill, the struggle to keep ordinary day-to-day -day chores running is often toughest. One man whose wife went through treatment for breast cancer while their two young children were at school recalls trepidation at heading to the school gates, where he'd be surrounded by sympathy and well-meaning questions, but felt the urge to get away as soon as possible. 
Another remedied this particular awkwardness by wearing large headphones on the school run, rather than come up with a response to the nonspecific, what can we do to help? Find space to recharge but Seeger says that rather than fending off all well-wishers, it can be useful to work out exactly how friends and family could help with the domestic load. Though, as that same husband points out, it's not that helpful to have tearful relatives around, dot he adds that another challenge was having to learn how to cook, pretty damn quick. His wife previously did the cooking but was unable to do so during her chemotherapy treatment. The calls for food would come at any time, my wife wouldn't have eaten for days through sickness, then would suddenly fancy lamb cutlets and mashed potatoes. Ultimately, for any spouse shouldering this, the key, says Seeger, is not to put too much pressure on yourself. Slowing down is difficult for some people. There is pride, fear, and people like to use battle language, we cannot let this beat us. But you have to carry on with hobbies, or meeting friends, or finding space for yourself. You need to recharge mentally, however you can. Life shrinks a bit, adds one man who has been where Prince William is. But that's no bad thing.